your efforts. Anyone to me, you know, because some people, you know, whatever form that you can move our people towards independence, self-determination, and sovereignty, it is all good. But you are physically doing it. You put much of your energy, time, effort, and money into making this happen, you know. And so, therefore, to me, you, you are special, brother, in our struggle to, uh, <clears throat> you know, move our people forward. Absolutely, yeah. brother. Appreciate you. Yeah, no doubt. Definitely appreciate you for, for all that you do and for um, Africa, for the Africans. Uh, a few weeks ago, you sent me uh, on WhatsApp uh, just a ton of good information, man, that you sent me. On what's happening, uh, you know, the Pan African, the uh, Black Star rep uh, Repatriation and Pan African Community uh, in Ghana, you know, you sent that information, and of course the flyer with um, with the uh, uh, tours that are upcoming and the packages and what they all include, you know, just a good wealth of information, and of course uh, some of the paperwork. And the layout. Now, where is now where is the um, uh, the land that is going to be utilized uh, right now for the repatriation? Uh, yes, uh, that land is in an area called Jahadzi, and that's in the central region, and that's close by Winneba, and that is ninety minutes to an hour. Um, excuse me, it's ninety minutes to. Hundred uh, to two hours, so hour and a half to two hours uh, drive from Accra to mm -hmm. Jahadzi or from Cape Coast Elmina to Jahadzi. So you're kind of in that central point, right? Okay, yeah, I've been to in fact, uh, I that vision that you are now be making it become a reality. I had that vision because I visited it, was my first visit to Ghana and I stayed in Winneba, there was a resort there. It was kind of run down, but I kept looking at it in all its potential. And I said, man, if somebody could make a, you know, could remodel this and make it really nice and then promote this in the West for brothers and sisters to come here, we'll take you, pick you up from the airport, get you out of Accra and all of that and get you here to Winterbond. You can relax. And it's right on the ocean. It's beautiful. I mean, swimming pool that is private, and then the ocean, of course, and then all the other activities that could happen. Then we could, you know, get you to Cape Coast dungeons. You can see them damn dungeons. Then get you to Kamasi. You can go to Kamasi and, and uh, you know, I mean, so much. I was like, wow, what a nice place. And you're developing. It's just fantastic. That is beautiful, man. Uh, yeah, no, it's just, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, yes, it's um, it's one of those great opportunities where you know Malcolm X talk about land is the base of uh, independence, and uh, it's the basic for us to build that freedom and justice and that foundation that we want. Uh, so we have to just be bold and learn the game. Uh, so since I've been traveling to Ghana from 2006 uh, to the last time I was in Ghana, which was uh, January 2022, uh, literally 15 straight years on 20 journeys. And while we're doing these journeys to Ghana, you know, you're telling people that your, your goal is to learn the culture, the system, learn how to do international business, learn real estate development, because you have to keep on progressing in societies. Like, we start off from study groups, most of us, or joining certain black organizations. But then we have to, you know, we have to keep that foundation right there, but also we have to keep building on it. So building on it is getting the land and also reaching out to your brothers and sisters and say, hey, family, we can build on this land to build a community and put our financial resources together to build true black corporate economics and be able to be a competitor on the African continent, competing with the likes of the uh, Lebanese, the Indians, and the Chinese, which are three of the biggest groups there in different parts of Africa. And since we're talking about West Africa, definitely the three biggest in West Africa to where they dominate markets and a lot of the things that we as black people in the African diaspora uh, with the skills, talents, and our financial resources, those are things that we can actually be doing 
So they're the ones doing it, um, and some of them have been there for generations. So some of them have beaten us to, you know, to the actual connection. Because during the times when, for example, the Chinese or the Indians were brought to different parts of Africa as indentured workers, um, they literally stayed there. And just like uh, when contracts are offered, and, you, and a group of Chinese or Japanese or whatever group of people coming, uh, foreigners coming, they're there to stay because you know, most of the countries that they're coming from are overpopulated, as in India and mm -hmm. China. And then now they're trying to relocate their population. As a matter of fact, a good percentage of the uh, population of Indians like dominate East Africa. You know, like when you're in Tanzania, mm -hmm. you, yeah. you talk to certain people and they'll tell you that their family been here for three, four, five generations. You know, because, mm -hmm. you know, we heard the story of Idi Amin um, and his, right. his, his move to push out um, in, um, right. Asians out of uh, Uganda. And then they didn't just leave Africa completely. Some of them did, but some of them went to other countries. So you, you, you tell them, our brothers and sisters in the diaspora that we have to take this thing serious. Acquiring land, developing it, and reaching out to our brothers and sisters and creating opportunities. And also we have so much of our own people from the diaspora in different parts of Africa. And let's be honest, you know, some of them are struggling. I'm not going to say a lot of them because I don't know the exact numbers. But some of them are struggling and some of them can use the help of a community. And some of them would have been better off investing their resources in a community. Because after about two or three years and the business that you thought you were going to build is not like flowing. You know, the money that you initially came with is gone. And you didn't invest in land. You didn't build a home. You didn't cut down your monthly cost of, of business. So now you have all this expense now. So, the, so I want to give people, the, you know, the why and things like that. Because sometimes people say, uh, I want to go to Africa. And I just want to just, I want to connect into the, you know, in, into the, the, the culture of the, the, the country. And that's fine. And that's exactly what we're doing. The only difference is we're doing it as a community versus as an individual. So now right. we show up somewhere. It's a unit of us versus individuals. And you can go a long mm -hmm. way and you're stronger together. And we, right. have, we have struggled here together as a people, you know, whether we're from Jamaica, America, or whatever country, you know, so we're connected together. So let's use our connection and work together and look out for each other. So that's what the community represents. And that's what we must do. And we must reach out to Africans on the continent to make them understand that, you know, we're not coming as tourists. No, we're coming home. We're coming home to work with you to build Africa to make sure that all of us who are Africans can share in the wealth of Africa, you know, share in the land of Africa, the future of Africa. Because if we don't, there will be no future for us. You know, when, you, when, when I heard that the Chinese some years ago were trying to move 300 million Chinese into Africa, and they're in all these places that, in fact, uh, in the Berlin Conference of 1884-85, when Europeans physically sat at a table in Berlin, Germany, and carved up Africa, that's what the Chinese are doing now. The Chinese are all over Africa, not just in Ghana or in East Africa and Kenya and so forth. And, you know, they're all over. And then the projects that they make, they only use Chinese labor. They don't, they don't uh, 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 employ any of the indigenous people, any of the people of those countries. And then when you default on the loan, they take the project. They have, they, they have Zambia's airport. The Chinese control it. And then the Chinese put security forces. You know, what, what other groups are doing on the continent of Africa we could never do in those countries. Never. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I'm saying to people. Family, um, it's kind of like getting your birthright stolen from you. But then at the same time, too, mm -hmm. if we in the diaspora don't step our game up and say, hey, I'm going to put my resources and my brothers and sisters and come together. Look at all the skilled engineers that we have uh, in, mm -hmm. in this uh, country in America. Black engineers, regardless of wherever they, they come from. You know, that's a whole enterprise right there. And that's what I'm telling people is like, we have the potential and we have everything ready to go from the African diaspora. The one thing is missing, yeah. we have to organize it and then we got to like, 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 like set it off on like a mission and then like, 
you know, the Libby does mm. not execute what needs to be executed. And that's what we're doing. We're organizing people from the African diaspora. We're coming together in groups doing tourism journey. And, you know, whether we're going to uh, Ghana, Senegal, or Gambia, Tanzania. But since we're talking about Ghana, when we're going to Ghana, uh, we're able to see the country and then you're able to connect to the business and investment conference where you're going to be doing a whole lot of networking and then a day or two later you're going to go see the land you're going to go see people who are building their homes people who are building their homes you're going to go see our black star pan african office you're going to go see something in a vision to where we're working towards it and the best time to do that is now because five ten years from now when you're trying to get land in africa if there's land available it's going to be ridiculously expensive and one of the things is if we don't lock in down these deals I'm telling people, these big groups out there, Indians, Chinese, Lebanese, and others, they're literally out there, they're going to be building their resorts, they're going to be doing all these uh, things along all the different coasts. I tell people, look at Jamaica as a prime example, from Ocherias, Negril, Montego Bay, three of the top tourist uh, destinations just right there in one country, and look at who owns all of the resorts and all of the establishment built there. Exactly. It's rich families from different parts of Europe, America, they put their mm -hmm. money together and they made their moves. They understand the vision of investing, they understand the vision of, uh, you know, of real estate development and business enterprising. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I'm trying to get more of us involved in because by us not having that mindset, you know, others are going to come and just take advantage of our opportunities and then what we're going to say, you know, because you know, I hear a lot of us sometimes we just hear in America we complain about what these other groups are doing in Africa. And I'm like, you know, you can sit there and complain just like someone on the sidelines, but in order to change the flow of the game and make things happen, you got to get in the game and play. And that's all you simply tell or, or, uh, or, your brothers or, and sisters. Or even, more, or even more importantly, create your game. The hell with their game. Create your game. The bottom line, Brother Bomani, is that Africa is ours. There is no place on this planet, not even the Caribbean, that we can say, this is ours. In fact, the, the Caribbean is a playground for Europeans <laughs> across Asia. Right, serious. And we just work there. You know? We don't run nothing there either. Even when Barbados did what they did, kicking the Queen's ass out, should have been done a long time ago. But still, they run it. The, 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 the resorts, the hotels, all of that, they run it. And we just manage it. And we just serve people. And it's the same thing happening on the continent. And I'm saying is that at least on the continent, we got our act together in doing what you're saying we should do. We can say to other groups coming in, no, you're not coming here with this. No, you're not buying. This is ours. We couldn't do it where you come from. And you know it. We couldn't do it. Especially in a group of us. No. And so I'm saying, you know, we should not allow it to happen to us, but it is happening. And, 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 and to the point that even though you're doing what you're doing, this is a very tenuous position that we're in at this time of our history as a people. Because, you know, for us, we have bought into this idea of, of, of capitalism, of America. And so forth, and, and 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 for African people, see individualism. That's not us, but that is European. We're individuals, you know. Individualism is a, is a desire, you know. But collectivism, for us as African people, is is a must. Is it, is it an imperative? And so for us to be collective and pulling our resources and so forth and doing what you're doing, I, I see the layout. I see the plots of a land that people can buy and, 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 and make a community there in, in, uh, in Ghana and, oh, and, and all over the continent. All over the continent. Imagine we started doing this all over the continent and, and building roads, linking up, building highways, building railroads, building ports, building hospitals, schools, and so forth. We have all the damn resources that all the people in the world want. The only thing that we don't have is the right mind. Sorry to go off on you, brother, but <laughs>
But yeah. Now I'm with you on the, on the right mindset because that's it's literally becomes a, a mental warfare to where you're either gonna be mentally organized and ready or you're not. Um, and uh, sometimes it just comes down to that. So that's what we're doing, uh, you, I, and many of us out here in the black conscious uh, movement and this pan-African movement and this, uh, this general movements of black people trying to educate more so uh, than yeah. anything else so people can put the, their minds together because the rest of the things we can put together, but um, if, if our minds are not right and we're not organized together, we'll, we'll come together and build something and then turn around and destroy it the same day. Mm. Yeah, because we'll yeah. be at war with each other and you know mm. and things like that so those are the things that we're fighting with as a people you know mental struggles mental disorder and so on and you know no other people have to really deal with what we have psychologically have to deal with you know this you know, in our dna itself uh, but mm -hmm. no one is going to feel sorry for us they're going to say that you know this happened a long time ago like people have always say and, um, you know, so I'm not saying for us to get over it. I'm saying for us to work together to figure it out because we're on our own and uh, no help is coming. Um, and That's right. the generation that we have birthed, we have to leave something in place for them. And we can't just, you know, just tell them this, you know, figure it out and things like that. Uh, that's not progress. So right now, while, you know, we have certain things going on, our goal is to build a future for them to where we are educating our own children, you know, in the land that we have, phase two of it, you know, we have space to build education and training buildings. You know, whether you you, you work it as our own university or whatever, which is fine because you have multiple buildings and things dedicated to educating us as a people uh, from important fields of like technical and business operation and things that we just need to know how to do so we can run our own affairs. Because when we have to run and manage the industries, the factories, and the resorts and the, the town itself, you know, we're going to have to teach ourselves what we need to know to make it work and things like that and put our our children, our people in place of this, you know, being able to run an empire and things like that and that, you know, that it starts now. Uh, so that's what the foundation of the land and that's why I'm explaining to people that we have an office there, you can go see the land, you can go see the people building on there. Do your research and your legwork. Let us connect you to what's going on. Because the issue that we have uh, nowadays is when people see you building something like this and them themselves and their crew could not figure it out and you're progressing. That's when the, the hatred, the jealousy, the envy and all that stuff come. But uh, we tell individuals that, hey, if you want the source of information for this community, for the tours, for what we're doing, we have our website, africaforafricans.org and you have me directly to communicate with so we can give you the proper details, answer all the questions and everything. Because we live in a world where it's so much negative energy out there and misinformation is passed around about your company. So I tell people, if you want to know anything about this company, you reach out to us. Because who's going to know more about what's going on in us? And things like that. Uh, so let's try to get our people to, to kick in with the critical thinking and click in with understanding that you know, we're at a time where you know, we've been working here for hundreds of years now let's take some of the resources that we're working and then reinvest it in land, real estate development, community, and the future of our people and think of ways how we're putting our money together as our own credit union, reinvesting it and so on. These are the ideas that we have to step up to now, especially since so much of us are going to Africa, which means that if more of us are going to Africa, why are we not more so putting our money together and making moves in Africa? Because we've sold certain dreams and certain ways people talk. People have talked down to me about this community like we're just going to isolate ourselves. As a matter of fact, all my business partners, I tell them they're all Ghanaians. I'm the only one that's, uh, you know, that's not from Ghana and things like that. And everybody that we're connecting with you know, is in the country. And then we have also Ghanaians and other people in the group. So we're letting people know this is the truest energy and example of Pan-Africanism, not what they think they're yeah. doing. You know, because we're, yeah. we're talking about many nations of people, many different skilled backgrounds coming together. And that's what our Africa Tourism Investment Energy represent. Because see, before, you know, you know uh, when we came to Africa and to Liberia, we had a European mindset. We're better than them. You know, we, we have been educated by Caucasians. We're close to the Caucasians, Europeans. 
you know, you're African. And then their mindset was, well, we're African. We weren't enslaved, even though we've been colonized, but at least we weren't. Enslaved. So that, that, that conflict has been there, and it is still there. Still there, you know. And so the bottom line is, is that we need to do it. And that's what I love about what you're doing. We can talk all we want to, and that's what I do on this program. Yes, I talk, but I'm trying to encourage our people to do, to physically go there, to physically do things, to go into our community to help uh, uh, educate our people, to be the strong voice. You know, the greatest impediment for our liberation and self-determination and, 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 and sovereignty is the theology that we believe in, Christianity particularly even as, as well as Islam, and in the government that we believe in. We believe this. We want to fight for this. We believe in voting. We believe that this government would treat us right and, 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 and all this. Like, this, this is crazy because I don't give a damn if Europeans become a numerical minority, so to speak, in 10, 15 years from now. They'll still run this. Everywhere the European has been, he runs it. And most of the time, they're, they're the minority group of, of wherever they are. Right. Outside of Europe. <laughs> yes, outside of Europe. And yet, still they, I mean, in South Africa, in Namibia, they're still running it. So I'm saying to us is that we're, we should throw, kick off all the mysticism, all the tribalism, all the bullshit and come together as African people. We, you said it a while ago, and Dr. John Henry Clark said it eloquently, we have no friends. We have no friends. Yeah, absolutely, and you also mentioned... Uh, you, know, you want a friend? Go look in the mirror. <laughs> you also mentioned yeah. uh, pan-Africanism or I'm Paris. Sure that you're, like, you see. I'm sorry, what you say? Yeah, I also was saying that uh, he mentioned uh, Pan-Africanism or Parish. That's right. That's the, that's the model of this program. Pan-Africanism or Parish. Unify or die. That's it. That's the that's model simple. of this program. I'm de- I mean, I'm committed. I'm dedicated. You know? I want to see... You know, I, I don't have long on this planet. That's for sure. I'm, I'm there near 70. You know? Be 70 soon, real soon, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and so I have more years behind me than I have ahead of me. And boy, would I love to see all the things that are happening, particularly what you are doing. And I would love to see more of it, more groups, more unity, more functional unity, more of us starting to understand that, that, our, that our salvation and that our future lies in us going home to build Africa for Africans. That's the deal. It ain't here. Some individuals here will be, be fine. They'll do fine. There's some individuals that are happy with the job they have, happy with the, the neighborhood they live in, the house that they have, the car they drive. They're happy. They got theirs. You know, I'm blessed, I'm blessed and highly favored, as some of the religious people say. Oh, you're blessed and highly favored, but our people are going to hell. There's crime everywhere. We are killing each other. We're miseducated, un- underemployed, but your ass is blessed and highly favored. No, we as a people must be blessed. And the only blessing is to throw off the yoke of ignorance and come together to do for ourselves. Pull our resources. Now, I, I, I was in Ghana a few years ago, you know, and, um, and there was a program, and I was, I was there with Amakusa. You know Amakusa, born in Africa. Uh, yes. Is she, yeah. Now, is she, I'm, I'm quite sure she's supporting your program. Uh, yes, I've worked with her since uh, 2006 up until now. Um, we always stay at One Africa from that time frame. Been mm-hmm. there um, 20 times over the 15 years that we have done tours and we always bring our groups there. So, you know, we're yeah. connected uh, to this doing business. Well, it's a beautiful place. I'll never forget when I first, when, uh, when Nana Kofu was, was, was still with us. 
and uh, you know, because he's he's from New York, but they're both from New York. And yeah, you mentioned that um, yeah, he's a part of the, the firefighter uh, connection in you. Yeah, and uh, you have yeah. that background also. That's how you. Mm-hmm. That's how you knew about him. Yep. <laughs> and and you know, unfortunately, you know, he, he he made his transition. But one of the things I love about what the place they have right there on the ocean, the chalet that they have built over the years, the, the, you know, all of that, and that whole community there, Mabel's Table down the down the road, you know, Brother Cohen and all the people there. It's a beautiful community. But, you know, we need more of that, don't we? Uh, we yes. Um, and then we also, you know, have to take it to another level. Uh, so as we see our people before us doing certain things, we have to expand on that. So one of the things I'm always telling individuals is that it's, um, you know, it's a nonstop process you know we have to keep on you know building and building you know we have lost so much years and lost so you know so much uh, time and just lost so much everything so now yeah. is this time to just really just just be about it in this full fledged so uh, as new people are coming into Africa and they're looking to repatriate and things like that you know the advice I have for them is to don't bring all that drama from where you came from and to yeah. Understand that your own brothers and sisters from the diaspora are of value. You know you must work together with them, and then that's your key to how you connect with the rest of um, you know the people there in the country, because they need to see you connecting with your own people from where you come from. Uh, but if they see you fighting and bickering, then they're gonna you know it's gonna scare them, and they're gonna you know mm. and things like that. So. Um, those things right there, because it's not been like that. We have so many people in, in, in certain countries, like the popular ones are like Ghana and the Gambia. And, you know, you don't see those solidarities and things like mm-hmm. that. I try to do my best in, in what we have there in Ghana, and I've tried to encourage other people there in the country and also in other uh, countries. But uh, that's going to be one of the big things, and I'm, I'm hoping that we can do better this year as a people um, and show the rest of the world that, you know, we're serious about repatriation and we're going to work together to literally build that permanent bridge to where, you know, when our people from the diaspora come on over, we can set them up proper and get them in the right place. That way they're not spinning their wheels and they're not losing out on their money and things like that. And that way they could be encouraged to stay and build and things like that. Uh, and then if any of us, you know, kind of fall into certain hardship, at least, you know, we have a community there that can help us because if you're... Ghanaian and you're wherever you you know you're there in Ghana you're Nigerian and you're there in Ghana you know you have your people your community and things like that for those for us from that's a lot of times uh, you know some of us are the only people in our family that's gonna make that move and then we just kind of like right. on our oh, own. you're right yeah, yeah so instead right. of being on your own you know just team up with us as a people team up with your own people your own brothers and sisters and let's get this thing done right and let's stop all of the you know hey. you know the, the, you know, the they hating, uh, especially like like YouTube breeds a lot of this energy because people feel like that's what they have to do to get people to like their videos and subscribe to their videos. They got to consistently be in drama mode and things like that, you know. And I've been in lecture and education mode because I feel like it's this time to, to teach our people stop the foolishness. That's, that's, you know, we have a lot at stake. We have a lot of people looking at us and they're trying to make the decision should they move to Africa or not. And when they see us, they're struggling. When they see us, they're not having it together. You know, they're going to say, you know, might as well I stay where I'm at because I'm not going to take that chance. Uh, so that's what our goal is to literally make an organized repatriation movement where we have our business office there, community center, and we can just run operations and just help people get this thing done the right way and put them in the right connections for investments and, and, and so on and so on. And you know, so the goal is just to change the scope of this because you have a lot of people that you have a lot more people interested in going to Africa on a living basis than I've ever seen at any time. Because uh, when we started doing this business in early 2000, it was just a different mindset. Uh, you, you know, you yeah, had, you it, was had to, more of a, it was more of a tourist mindset. Then. Oh yes, and you have to be careful about who you talk to about Africa and talk about. Do you want to come to Africa with me? Do you want to come live and do business? Because you might, you know, they might take it as an insult. <laughs> What leave this beautiful America? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and I tell people yeah, I do understand America got it going on. Comfort. Yeah, and all these creature comforts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, you understand America got got it going on, but you tell people one of the things that you know we realistically have to understand by now, 
we look at all of the prominent movements, they always get hijacked, infiltrated, and shut down. So you know mm -hmm. one thing is that you are limited when it comes to building black power. You know, you can live here and do well for yourself and, you know, and do certain things. But when you start crossing that line of black power and billing, the things like we're talking about billing in Ghana where you have 15 acres and you have 60 acres and you're going to build mm -hmm. something that's like 100% black enterprise and you're going to build you know, a beach town where all of the investors and the people who own the resorts and what you have set up is groups of black folks. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you try to do that, you know, try to come here to Georgia and try to do that. You know, you run yourself into a whole world of trouble and problems and what yeah. the, the folks in the code violation don't get you then the you know then the domestic terrorists will get you and all the other you know they, or then the, the black devils will get you but it's just one of those things <laughs> when you're trying to build this in ghana the chiefs the people in the town they want the opportunities they want you to come invest and do these things and you know they're even willing to just say hey i can offer my labor i can offer you know my culture i can offer you know like the chief i can offer land and things like that mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah. together we have what it needs to just build something and work from there. So that's like me just explaining the details of why we're building this community and why it's so important. That's mm -hmm. right. Sure. Um, I'm gonna take a break. All right, absolutely. We'll have more discussion and, uh, and 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 all the information that you sent me, man, is just fantastic, brother Buman. You've been doing some great work, and and uh, you. You deserve a, a bigger platform that that you can get much much bigger than what I'm trying to do here. Oh so yes, I man. Do have a number to call. Huh? I'm always open to it. Um, you know, we have a lot of information yeah. to share based on the 15 years of expertise of traveling and doing business in Africa, and just want to share it with the world for free, and then just get our people open their minds on these great investment opportunities in Africa, so we can actually build and have black ownership. I say. All right. I'm speaking with Brother Bamani Tanyemba of Africa for the Africans. Brothers and sisters, go to AfricaForTheAfricans.org and you can see for yourself. This man is doing the work. He is, he is, he is. How many people have you, have, over the years, have taken to Africa of over 500? Uh, yes, uh, well over 500 people across uh, seven different uh, countries. I've been to a total of 10 in Africa, uh, but uh, seven on tours. And I've uh, yep. been to 35 countries across um, six continents over the last, um, you know, say about the last uh, 20 plus years, uh, 35 plus countries. So we will experience and uh, will understand this game and this business. And then the background of mine is, this, is technical administration and business administration. So, you know, we have all the necessary uh -huh. skills to run things. This brother loves our people. He really loves Africa. He loves Africans as well as I do. Brothers and sisters, you're listening to African Perspectives. Here on the Motherland Media Network, on time for an awakening.com and blacktalkradionetwork.com. We'll be right back with Brother Bomani Chang, of Africa for the African. You stay with us. We'll be right back. You are listening to African Perspective with host Brother Oshi on time for an awakening media, part of the Black Talk Radio Network for podcasting or live program scheduling. Hit them up at time for an awakening at gmail.com. Yes, family, Bomani Tamba here, family. I'm doing this uh, interview with our good brother, Oshi, from African Perspective. And so we're talking about the things that we do and we specialize with in Africa, which is uh, Africa Tours and Investment, um, the journeys to the different countries that we have, from Ghana, Tanzania, Senegal, and the Gambia. And then our investment project, Black Star Pan-African Community in Ghana, 
on 15 plus 60 acres of land. Uh, so sharing all the details and getting everybody connected as best as possible and just want individuals to check out the website, the Facebook page, the YouTube page and just organize the information and then connect with us when you're ready. <coughs> Supported by the mom that wants that special touch. Little act of kindness proved to me so much. When we give what we know, kitchen pots are bad. Family, uh, give us another minute or two, and Oshi will be back on as we wrap up the second half of our program today, talking about repatriation and pan Africanism, reconnecting to the African continent through tourism and investments with Africa for the Africans and Black Star Pan African community. Richard. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, 
And then on Saturdays from 7 to 9, the Sankofa Elders Council. On Sunday from 7 to 9, time for an awakening. That's again with Brother Elliot and Brother Richard. And the number to call is 215-490-9832. You know, uh, Brother Bomani? Uh, yes, Brother, I'm, I'm here live and direct. Right on, live and living color. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to play this piece that I, that I sent you on the wealth, the 10 wealthiest places. And you, you can see the mineral wealth that Africa has, <clears throat> that everybody wants, think they can't do without, and they sure now, hell damn it, don't want to pay for it. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this, um, it's almost like a TED Talk, but it's on YouTube. If you go to YouTube and put in Howard Nicholas, He's, a, he's talking to a group of people, and he's saying um, that um, we must keep Africa poor. Africa must not develop. Africa must not be a, a producer. We must keep them poor so we can exploit them and take their resources so we can be producing and we sell products back to Africa. That's what happened in China. I know you've been to Ghana many times, and you see the brothers and sisters on the streets with all kinds of stuff on their heads, selling. None of that is produced in Africa. It's produced outside of Africa and brought back in. You know? So it, 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 it's frustrating, you know, when I was in Ghana to see the, the, the China Mall being developed. I appreciate the highways. I definitely appreciated the highway from, uh, um, from Accra to the northern, well, excuse me, no, from Tamale, from Tamale uh, uh, to uh, Moli Park, you know. I mean, it's a nice highway because I, I, I've driven that a road, rather, um, you know, from uh, Tamale in the northern region to uh, Moli Park in, in near Bikini Faso, and it was terrible. It was terrible. So I appreciate that. But what was interesting, they built a resort for themselves with an additional road on a higher hill. <laughs> yeah. They built a, the Chinese built a resort for themselves on a higher hill, overlooking, you know, the wildlife and stuff, I tell you. But I want to play this for our brothers and sisters, and, uh, and I want to say to us, that's, this is why we are doing this, because th this is ours. The, this this wealth is ours as African people. Not that you're Ghanaian or Cameroonian or Nigerian or whether you live anywhere else in the Africa. It is for African people. So, check it out. Today's video, we present the top 10 richest African countries based on natural resources. Number 10, Botswana. This South African country is rich in diamonds, copper, coal, soda ash, and nickel. Number nine, Ghana. This West African country is rich in gold, bauxite, diamonds, manganese, crude oil, silver, and salt. Number eight, Tanzania. This Eastern African country is rich in tanzanite, gold, diamonds, gems, and silver. Number seven, Guinea. This West African country is rich in bauxite, alumina, diamonds, and gold. Number six, Mozambique. This southeastern country is rich in aluminium, natural gas, crude oil, copper, gold, rubies, graphite, titanium, marble, bauxite, and many more. Number five, South Africa. This Southern African country is rich in gold, diamonds, iron ore, platinum, manganese, chromium, uranium, silver, beryllium, and titanium. Number four, Zambia. This Southern African country is rich in uranium, silver, cobalt, copper, coal, lead, zinc, and gold. Number three, Namibia. This Southern African country is rich in uranium, diamonds, zinc, lead, sulfur, salt, tantalite, and copper. Number two, Niger. 
This West African country is rich in uranium, coal, cement, gold, iron ore, tin, phosphates, petroleum, salt, gypsum, and many more. And the number one spot for the richest African country based on natural resources is number one, Democratic Republic of Congo. This Central African country is actually the richest country in the world and is almost single-handedly powering the global tech industry with all the valuable resources that are found in the country. The Democratic Republic of Congo is rich in abundance of copper, cobalt, zinc, diamonds, oil, coltan, gold, lithium, bauxite, natural gas, tin, and many more. Did you enjoy our video? What do you think of our list of the top 10 richest African countries based on natural resources? Do leave your comments below, and if there's any video you'd like us to do, please leave your suggestions as well. I have been your presenter of the day, Kiri, and you can find me on Instagram at kiri.han or on YouTube at kiri.han voice time. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our African videos. And remember, Africa is watching. Africa is watching. We are watching Africa. We are watching Africa. Yes, absolutely. Oh. Um, yeah. that, that sounds like Black Africa, uh, the economic and cultural basis for a federated state by Sheikh Anta Diop. Yes, yes, yes. There are so many. Sheikh Anta Diop understood that. Thomas Sankara, Kwame Nkrumah, Polite, Patrice Lumumba, all of them understood that we must have a federated Africa, Africa united. It's not just Ghana. It's not just Nigeria. It's not just South. It's Africa united. You can still be whatever cultural group, tribe, so to speak, that you are. But the most important thing is Africa and the development of Africa and to control Africa's resources. That's the most important thing. And, 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 and unfortunately, we are not there. And so we are undermined. We are manipulated. We are scrutinized. We are played on, and, 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 and Africa is the richest continent, and, and even though it's been plundered for hundreds of years, when you look at the wealth of Europe, the wealth of Europe is the direct result of the theft of Africa. When you look at the British and all the gold and she ugly oh, yeah. ass riding a gold carriage, that's Africa. There's no resources in Europe. None. You see what happens when you look at Belgium. I can't stand the. I can't stand none of them. The French, all of them, all of them. But Belgium, when 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 Leopold was working here when he first got Belgium through the Berlin Conference, and he said, if you didn't produce enough enough rubber or whatever resources that we want, we cutting off your hands, cutting off your feet. They used to have chocolate hands in Belgium, sold at the candy store. And where does the chocolate come from? It comes from Africa, from the cocoa farms in Africa. There are none in uh, Europe. So Cadbury's and Nestle's and all the others. So I'm saying it is us. It is ours. And yet we are perceived and depicted as a poor people. And when, in essence, we are a very rich people in culture, in materials, in wealth, but yet it is exploited. And we're trained to hate ourselves, and therefore we hate each other. We're trained to believe in, in what the Caucasian is, and therefore we invest in bleaching cream. We spend billions of damn dollars whitening our skin. Brother Momani, help me out, man. <laughs> help me out, man. Uh, yes, man. Uh, only thing I could say, uh, it's that time. Um, and and we just got to get up on our economics, you know. Part of what uh, yes. Sheikh Anta Diab had in the title, you know, it's you know, the economic and cultural basis. So getting back to our economics and our culture solves our problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. But, so, but see... We've been trained to hate. 
African culture. We've been trained to hate ourselves and each other. So the job that you're doing and I'm doing and many of us like-minded individuals are doing and trying our best. And I'm saying to really, Brother Bomani, I'm going to present it to you. When you reject it, I'm going to move on. Leave your ass here. You know, I'm tired of trying to, you know, beat my head against the wall, trying to make you or trying to beat your damn head against the wall, trying to get you to understand the importance of functional unity, the importance of embracing, embracing your culture, the importance of, of, of honoring your ancestors and giving reverence to your elders and respect for your family and to love each other to have a complementarity between African women and African men. So it, it's, it's deep, man. Yes, yeah, serious, man. Um, brother, it is what's going on now, and that's why uh, for those of us who know better must do better and lead, lead the blind if we have to, and things like that. So uh, Move in Africa, for those of us that are part of the repatriation movement, those of us that are going back and forth or live there in the continent, um, that's your contribution right there as far as uh, making that move in. So we have to just strengthen that energy because the fact of it is already in motion. So the adjustments is, you know, is organizing people with the right mindset and say, hey, we can do this together, serious. And if we don't do this together, you know, we're going to be overrun and overtaken and everything. Last I remember, the population of countries like India and China is growing and growing. And last I remember, those countries have industrialized industrialize so much to where they have destroyed a good part of their country to where certain parts of their country is not livable. And as soon as you're going to turn around one day and they're going to say only 25% of, of China now is livable. So what do the Chinese going to do? Start killing themselves? No. They, no. They, they're going to start moving to where they have opportunities. So they have already flooded all over the Caribbean and like uh, South America. And African continent is just so big. You know, but they're working their way in, you know, even if it's from Zambia all the way up. Uh, they're working their way in. So, you know, you're just telling people that this is real and just look back 20 years ago. Even look back 20 years ago in America when, you know, when you used to actually see brothers out there, uh, you know, at the uh, construction sites and at uh, landscaping sites and things like that, or a certain other, uh, you know, position, you know. But now you see this. Other, you know, other nations of people, and this is, and this is like a global phenom of just us getting squeezed. You know, people used to talk about gentrification and things like that. Now, th that whole situation is just normal now, where you see certain urban areas that used to be, you know, predominantly um, black people, and now it's an influx of all kind of people. But at the same time, too, everything has gone up. Uh, you know, especially housing. Um, so, you know, we have to just really just put ourselves in this position like we can literally find ourselves homeless as a people out throughout the world. You know, if we don't start locking down on what we need to do. You know, if we're here and we say let's focus more on America, then absolutely, family, do what you need to do and invest. You know, you have old broken down apartments and houses, buy up those lots, reinvest in it and put your folks in it. Yeah. Or else somebody else is going to come buy it up and increase the price and put whoever in it uh, so these are real things that's going on and that's the good thing about it all these things that we talk about oh she they're in your face all day every day none of this stuff is Thanks, hidden brother. anywhere and then you have and then everything is online yeah mm -hmm. it is i mean everything anything that you need to know is right there at your fingertips, everything, you know, all of it. Everything that me and you are talking about, I mean, number one, you can go to the website, africafortheafricans.org, because everything on the website, for, for, for anyone that wants to uh, take one of your tours, to invest, only information, all the things that you need, the shots, the, the, the visas, all of, everything is right there. Yeah, and they also have examples of everything that we've done in the past. I religiously record videos of everything we do. Yeah, uh, you so do. You, you can see like a whole <laughs> playlist of an entire tour. So yeah. you know, and then you can see all the things that we have available. And I tell people, you have to be prepared to get yourself ready to enjoy yourself. You know, you having the greatest time. 
is important because everything is set for you to do so. So I'm telling everyone, this is the best journey of a lifetime to connect you to, to different parts of Africa. And yeah. I spend a, a lot of work putting together a good itinerary and, and connecting us with a good staff. So I tell people, if you look at our, you know, the highlights compared to what other people are doing, and you'll see that we literally have covered all bases, including the networking part. So you come there, you know, you come by yourself, you end up meeting a whole lot of people and you have a whole lot of new friends. You know, from the people that you're traveling with to also uh, the people in the country that you are meeting and uh, connecting with. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you look at what you have done and somebody goes through the process and, and everything is laid out for you. And, and you have videotaped all of this for years. So, you know, at the time that you go to the airport, by the time you're getting on the plane to go, by the time you disembark and, and, and go to your hotel and, and, and get briefed on all the things you're going to do, get into the, um, the bus, the coach, whatever, go to these different sites and so forth, all of this videotape, talking to the local people, and of course the, the uh, tour guides, which are local people. I mean, all of this videotape, all of it's right there for you for many years, the many sites and different things that you can do in these in, in these countries, it's fantastic, man. It really is. You know. So I mean you can go to many of the beautiful countries of uh you know, I know uh your Senegal and Gambia tour didn't have enough people this year. So it's it's um been rescheduled for March thirty first to April tenth of next year. Uh yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and um, so it's one of those things you're telling people, you're interested in this journey, commit by putting a deposit down. That way we can lock you down and that way we can you know, calculate to have the right amount of people that we need to do the journey. Mm -hmm. But um, right. you know, five, six people is not going to work. Um, you know, we can probably figure something out. But uh, in order for us to enjoy the fullness of it, you know, it's, a it's a budget situation. So the bus, right. you want to make sure you have a nice, comfortable right. bus and all those things. Um, so, mm -hmm. but, yeah, I mean, because so, I mean, really, I've looked at other tours and the amount of money that people have asked. You are far more economical than any of them. And in fact, you just started this uh, uh, next year to be four thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, that's uh, for the uh, Ghana December uh, twenty twenty two. That's only right. because the uh, the tickets are the tickets right now on average are about closer to two thousand dollars. Then they, you know, so they've gone up a lot more. So December one is right. this, that's the issue. But most of the the price which you're looking at, family, a lot of um, close to half of that goes towards the, um, you know, the ticket itself. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, for Europeans, it don't cost hardly anything from Europeans to go from Europe to America. Oh, uh, not not at all. Right. Sometimes you're talking about four or five hundred dollars. Exactly. <laughs> that but that's simple you, and easy. Yeah, but for you to go from from America to, to Ghana or anywhere in Africa, fifteen two thousand dollars. Yeah, it's yeah. um, and you can you can tell the energies out there to you know, kind of you know discourage people and things like that. So you do your best to package it and just make it work as best as possible. And then this, and then you know, right now we just have to use the airlines that they have available. So we just use them. Until we figure something out uh, later on in the future, but you know we have, we have the whole we have a whole lot of things to tackle as a people. We just have to get full fledged independent on a hundred percent basis of what we got going on in the world. Like literally control our destiny to the highest right. level, and that's using corporate yeah. economics. You know, say say we want to build an airline, well, it's going to take a lot of our, our individual money, but hey, it, if that's what it takes. Hey, we can get it done. But the point I'm telling people is like. None of this thing is impossible. It's just the only issue now is the fact you have to be willing to learn to work with your own people and get this thing done. And I think that's it. Well, you know, at the, at the end of the program, I always emphasize the word will. Just like when Didi Fahodier, you know, it, you know, our victorious destiny. We will. I mean, it's the will. Do we have the will to do it? That's what it boils down to. And you just mentioned that. 
you know, you've got some great trips upcoming. Uh, May 24th to June 5th, going to Ghana. And then uh, November 17th to November 28th, going to Tanzania. And then, of course, December 24th to June, June, excuse me, December 24th to January 5th, going to Ghana. And then, once again, the Senegal trip is May 30th, excuse me, oh, man, March 31st to June Oh, shit. Oh, March, March 31st to April 10th. April 10th. <laughs> March 31st to April 10th, going to Senegal and Gambia, two countries. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, we're talking about also, too, the importance of the land to be, uh, to be bought and sold and developed, investment, the Black Star, Re- the Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African community that we were talking about earlier in in Ghana, uh, I mean, so so now, how could I access that? I have to, I have to uh, become a member, correct? Uh, as far as accessing information, what you have right there, you just read, uh, which is on the, the front page of our website, Africa for the Africans dot org, is um, you just click on the link, and then you have to go to all those details, and then. For individuals who want me to send in the application with all of the, the legal f- uh, files and sample paperwork, um, that's all I need is their email and I'll send it to them on email. And I mm-hmm. got a whole lot of things compiled in one email. Uh, that way everyone who is checking it out, they can be clear on a whole lot of things, uh, including the examples of the, the individual documents they will get and then also the, the documented documents as far as the the group itself, Black Star Pan African community, uh, and things like that. So a lot of times you're doing these kind of business with people, and they're not giving you clear information. And that's what I specialize in: detailed information. Uh, and I'm telling people that if you if you didn't learn to love reading, you, you're gonna have to do it now because this is your money. And we want don't no want no trouble or problems with anyone because everything we go by is our terms and what we have set up. So we ask people to please click on the information and read it just, just like the tour when you click on it it has an itinerary overview general term visa preparation details so you know it gives you all those information and then uh, what I've got what I have is presentations recorded presentations where we're going over these things on YouTube conference call we're also going over it on screen sharing and things like that so it's a lot of information to be to be clear so individuals can choose whichever they way they want it but we're just making sure that we have the presentations organized professionally at the highest level as you see in the website everything is structured organized neat all the lists of our previous uh, journeys and and as soon as you click on the, the black star link the, the introduction it gives you our incorporation for Ghana and our incorporation for here in the US showing true international business of operating from Georgia to to Ghana and having your business paperwork for both locations and things like that it is important that it is important that our people understand and know right. that this is not some you know poo uh <laughs> run of the mill kind of no. This is professional. It's professionally done. I remember a few things uh, that we're talking about investment in Africa, this and that, and land and so forth. And come to find out, it wasn't all that it was stated to be. They may they may have sent out nice pictures and so forth. But it didn't turn out that way. It didn't look that way. It wasn't that way, you know. But I have found you to be a man of integrity, and that is vastly important. Appreciate it. That, you know, a, you know, a true man of your word, and you have always produced since I've known you. I've known you now for seven years since I moved here. You know, I haven't gone on a trip with you. I was going to go, but I got sick. <laughs> <laughs> but there'll be other times because I'm getting well. So I'm, I'm definitely going to do that because... I've looked at your videos. I've seen how the tours are, are run, very well organized, very well structured, safe, and so forth. And and I think that uh, whatever uh, an individual who is listening to us, if you go on the website AfricaForTheAfricans.org and see for yourself, and then more importantly, make a decision. Put the down payment. It's a four hundred dollar down payment. Pay on it consistently. So by the time you're ready to go, you haven't just dropped a whole lot of cash. You're just ready to go. You got you some money so you can spend some money at the markets and so forth and, 
And I mean, pretty much everything else is there. You know, a nice hotel, you know, stay in a nice hotel. Uh, the, the buses are nice. You know, that one time I went, man, I was riding on a tro tro. <laughs> you know? Shoot. So, you know, I, I think it, it is beautiful. And I think that it just as you always promote it has a trip of a lifetime, and, and, it, and it is. But what it does, though, it inspires you. Unlike uh, just a tourist thing, it's not just a tourist thing. You're going to learn more about the country. You're going to see things outside of the little tourist things that they always give you. You'll learn to and, and, and talk with the people, you know, especially like in Ghana, because people in Ghana speak English. I mean, they speak a multiple number of languages, Khan, Tree, and so forth, but they speak English. So there's no communications problem. You know, it may be a little bit of communications problem for Senegal because they speak French, you know, but they speak English as well. So, yeah. So what is the number of people that you feel you have to have per, uh, per tour? Anywhere between what? I would say a minimum of 10 to 15. Um. Mm-hmm. And yeah, those are the minimums, uh, but, and you can fit on a nice Toyota coaster bus and you get a bigger group and you know, we can move up to more of a coach bus. So, mm-hmm. you know, you're always shooting for a bigger group um, and that just make the movements uh, smoother and yeah. the buses would be yeah. a big part of that. Because I've seen, I've seen some pictures with real nice sized groups. 30 some people, maybe damn near 40 people, you know, in, 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 in past uh, tours. Uh, you yes, um, you see any range from, it's actually, it was the smallest group and then the biggest 43. So you, throughout the 15 mm-hmm. years, you'll see uh, those and then you see the, you know, the COVID era, you know, you'll see the groups are all in the, you know, the teens, like 15 and so. Yeah. So that's, um, yeah. And well, yeah. I know two people. I know two people who are going to go, you know, um, and and they decided not to go because of COVID. You know, they had they had connected with you. You know, they were definitely going to go, and then because of COVID, they decided not to go. You know, and I know probably this uh, Senegal and Gambia trip was postponed or delayed or rescheduled because of of COVID. Yeah, you the know. situation is. Um uh, people are unsure about certain things, but I just tell everyone to just go with the flow of what we have because we're showing everyone that we have consistent schedule. Like when you look at the, the tour group for last year, it's one of the few years where I've actually completed four straight journeys. You know, we did Senegal and Gambia in April, then Ghana in May, Tanzania in November, and then Ghana again in December. And I mean, it was on average about uh, you know, uh, 13 to 15 people, but those are the four groups consistently so you're putting the energy out there letting people know that we're doing these tours and we're showing you that we're going you know and right. things like that but it's like we can't keep you know operating with the low numbers so that's why this you know adjusted Senegal and Gambia for next year so we can have a stronger group and then focus right now on Ghana May and December in Tanzania right. uh, so trying to get individuals so let's look at the information process it check it out talk have a conversation join the conference call and things like that and then make a commitment and stick with it. And if something comes up or something change that happened, then this, you know, we can add you to another journey or transfer you to another journey. So it's not the end of the world in that situation. Um, and the same thing with the airlines, they'll, you know, you, they'll give you an option to where they'll give you a credit, um, a full credit for you just to use it on another, mm-hmm. you know, another trip. So all yeah. those things are in place. So individuals just gotta follow the COVID protocols of what we have. And then go by what I'm telling them to do based on the fact that I've done six different journeys since the shutdown ended, you know, in around, um, around, around what, um, say, uh, September 2020, around that time, um, when you were right. able to go to like Ghana and Tanzania and so on. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's real. Uh, and I do understand the frustration of going through all these procedures and wearing a mask, but if you're looking to travel and enjoy life, you know, it may not always go back to normal. So the best thing I recommend individuals do is just, you know, just go with the flow as for now 
and then we got your back and we'll get you prepared. So all the people that we've shown you on group pages is people that followed all of our procedures and followed all of our guidelines and then now they're there in the country enjoying themselves and then they're back safe and things like that. So yeah. and, and and a lot of the country well at least the countries that Europe, they don't have a a, a a vaccine restriction or vaccine necessity to identify people coming into the country, do they? Uh, the only thing that I would say is some of them uh, just recommend, well, but not recommend, recommend and require for you to have a vaccination card. So those countries vary. It's um, it's hard to even say which ones do or don't. Um, and as far as Ghana, uh, you have to just keep on reading the updates um, because those things change. Uh, but whenever yeah. we, whoever is traveling with me on, on a group and we're having a conference call, whatever the research and things like that, I usually just look up those things ahead of time because I'm traveling also. And I usually just share it with the group and we just go through it and keep an eye out for any updates or change in the travel uh, protocols and things like that. So, so, you know, individuals that are traveling with us or even joining our community, they don't really have to do much other than follow the directions and follow the flow of everything. And we have everything set up in our business operation to take care of things for people for the most part and provide them with the best guidelines and support. Because I know that um, uh, some of the countries, they didn't have an issue or a problem with COVID. You know, they, they, there was not a lot of people being infected by it. You know, like in America, in Europe, and so forth. And, and one of the reasons why they were getting out in the sun, vitamin D. Maybe they're healthy. Also, too, they were a younger population. You know, but now some of the ones... You know, it seems like there's a dictate by the West or by the pharmaceutical companies or by those who say, no, they, they, they must have a shot. You know, they, 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 they must get the COVID vaccination. Do you see that? Is uh, that, what, that is? what I know is people being, are being lured into doing it because uh, from your employers uh, to just a uh, certain protocol of going to certain countries, it's just being enforced little by little. Unfortunately, okay. Um, and, okay. yeah. but it's not something that's stopping people because last I checked, all the flights I was on, they're all full. Okay. Yeah. Six, seven, six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight. Good afternoon. Six, seven, eight. Hello? Yeah, two, six, seven, two, six, seven. Good afternoon. Hey, brother. Yeah. Um, I'm, li I'm listening to your guests, right? Now, from what I understand, Ghana wants you to be take that COVID-19 shot uh, upon uh, getting there. Is that correct? No, that's not correct. Uh, uh, what you see on your site is a vaccination card. So individuals, just bring your vaccination card and you're good to go. But uh, no one should be there. Oh. Uh, no one should be there trying oh. to uh, inject you. Uh, but if you well, if you no, don't want well, to follow, well, I, 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 go ahead. well, what it is, I don't have a vaccination card. I'm not. I, I don't want the stuff in me. So yeah. that would I I couldn't uh, go to Ghana then. Um, you can go to Ghana. They'll give you a quarantine option. So to quarantine for a few days and then you're good to go. Uh, so those are some of the options that they have at this moment. Uh, I just came back in December and. Um, Everyone that traveled with me had to show their uh, vaccination card to the airlines before we get before we boarded, and also show it when we enter the country and show it when we're leaving. So unfortunately, that's uh, the situation. But um, the latest thing was a um, was a quarantine option, and um, I have a good brother that goes to uh, Sierra Leone also, and he told me the same situation. He had to quarantine for a few days, uh, but that's the situation nowadays. But well, what about? What about the plane flight over there? They're not even going to allow you on the plane if you don't have the those vaccination cards. Yes, and that's because that's what we're well, reading. Well, that's what we're reading. That's why we were thinking about Tanzania and not Ghana because of um, they want you to put that substance in your body, and I refuse to. So, yeah, yeah, definitely uh, understand uh, that situation. Uh, but as far as the airlines, under the new changes now. I was referring to when I went in December when it, you know it wasn't a quarantine option it was just you have to have a vaccination card so in this situation um, 
that's what you know they'll have a different procedure now um, as far as what needs to be checked off because now the vaccination card is not mandatory because what they're checking off is all the mandatory okay. stuff when you get to the, the airlines they want to make sure you have your travel certificate uh, which is basically you uploading your, your US COVID test up into the Ghana system they want you to make sure oh, you have okay. an updated uh, Ghana visa and things like that and you know that's, that's the basics from there on but um, it's um, unfortunate you have to go through all this hassle to return to your motherland but that's the purpose and the reason why we're setting up shop and operation there that way we can just be there and settle and we don't have to do all this going back and forth and having to deal with these crazy airport requirements okay i got you bro absolutely right, I'll, I'll go to your website and take a look please right. do ralph please do my brother it's well worth it man all right i'll all right. talk to you later thank all you all right thank you thank you brother absolutely appreciate you brother yeah good dude good man brother ralph yeah well we're, 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 we're winding down we only got a couple of minutes left brother Bumani. just you know, wrap us up here, man. Let us, you know, let us know all the things that we need to do. And I'm, I'm so proud of you, man. I, I really, I really am for all that you have done and continue to do to help our people go home and to help our people understand how important it is that we work together and spend each and spend our money with one another. So, any closing remarks, my brother? Uh, yes, uh, the only closing remarks I have for folks, uh, family, uh, visit our website africafortheafricans.org and check out all the details that we have. All the information is loaded on our main menu. So information for the land, information for the tours, our tour books, our newsletters, uh, other supporting details, uh, and so on. It's all there. Uh, it's a lot of information, but also we're just presenting all of our details up front so you can be clear. Uh, then once you finish checking out the information and you want to reach out to me, you can just reach out to me in this, uh, you have co uh, contact numbers there and everything. You have a WhatsApp link. Reach out to me and um, we'll talk and go through the information and then we get you set up. Uh, so that's uh, as simple as I try to make it and everything in between from there on that you need. Flat itinerary, uh, visa details, uh, help with anything. We work on and help you with everything. Uh, and the same, same thing for the land. Whatever you're not clear on, you want to be educated on how things work in Ghana as far as law and things like that. Uh, be on all of the videos that we have. I'll spend time and talk with you and get you prepared because that's what we're looking to do, family. Getting you prepared for repatriation and investing in Africa. I right, thank you, my brother. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Brothers and sisters. All right, brothers and sisters, we end this program like we end all of our programs with the words of Stephen Pico. The most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. This program is dedicated and committed to helping to free the African mind. But not just the M-I-N-D, but the M-I-N-E, because under the feet of African people lies all of the resources that everybody wants, think they can't do without, and they sure in the hell don't want to pay for it. Brothers and sisters, you have a blessed and wonderful day. Shem Hotel means go in peace. Ekante Sana means thank you. Bimivarie. Bimivarie means our victorious destiny. Brothers and sisters, we will be victorious. You have a blessed and wonderful day. Hope to see you on Friday. Be safe, family. Peace. All right, family. So that was um, my connection with our brother, Oshi, an African perspective. And our usual topics, uh, talking about repatriation and investing in Africa based on our Africa tourism and investment uh, business, Africa for the Africans, and Black Star Pan-African community. So we're just um, putting the information out and let individuals know if you need a proper connection to Africa to repatriate, to live, do business, to settle, to set up. Um, we have full experience. I have a full office here in Georgia and one there in Ghana. And our goal is to get you ready, get you connected and get you ready for um, African nation building and black power enterprising. You know, it's time for us to organize ourselves and build a future, the future for our children and the future for our people in general. 
So again, family, this is Bomani Tamba, live on Revolutionary Cam, and we'll keep it strong, and we'll keep you posted as the journey continues, and we have more and more information to keep you connected to.